As I go about my life as a working historian, I'm often challenged and asked why I concern myself with the past when there's so many other problems to deal with, personal problems, international problems, concerns that are far more relevant and, and immediate. Why do I study history, write books and a thesis? And why, if I'm to believe Henry Ford, that history is all bunk? I uh, hated pantomime as a child. I hated teen trivia and childhood drama. Instead, I looked to read about history. I enjoyed history, basic history, the story of explorers and navigators in the opening up of Australia. And I read books like Breasted's History of Egypt and the Great Deeds of British History and even the Buffalo Bill Annual, which to me was wonderful boys' own history. And I remember one particular story, and it was about Custer's column at Little Bighorn. And there in the book, and I still distinctly remember this, is a drawing of Indians charging. And underneath is written, Dawn the 6th. 1876, as the valley floor rumbled to the drumming hooves of Indian ponies, Crazy Horse leads his braves into the last attack. Graphic and visual. I remember that from being an eight-year-old. I went as far as reading fictionalised history. I enjoyed Treasure Island. And I remember the wonderful picture in my copy of Treasure Island, and it was the, the hero boy in the story, Jim Hawkins, and there he was in this picture, high on the crow's nest of a ship, hands down with a musket in each hand, and climbing up the rigging towards him was his pirate with a dagger in his mouth, and written beneath it was, one more step, Mr. Hands, and I'll blow your brains out. To me, again, wonderful graphic history that stirred me, and I remember it. Another impact on me was as a child in third class, I was probably about eight, and I saw a black and white documentary about the crossing of the Blue Mountains by Blackson, Wentworth and Lawson. This was at a time when kids looked at cartoons and Disneyland and the Mickey Mouse Club. I mean, a long while ago, mind you. I had no real interest in these. I, I looked for more historical documentaries as a kid. And the impact of that, the experience of that film in that classroom in third class stuck with me all my life and in fact dictated my career. I went to university, I began by studying law, I couldn't live law, and I finished my arts degree with history majors. I then went into the fledgling Australian film industry in 1972, and I worked as a production assistant at the Commonwealth Film Unit. At that time, there was very little history on television, but there were two profound and major series that really, again, impacted on me. One was Alistair Cook's America, and another one was Kenneth Clark's Civilization. And about that time also, because we used to watch a lot of films at the Commonwealth Film Unit as part of our learning experience, was a documentary called Culloden, and it was on the, the Battle of Culloden and the defeat of Bonnie Prince Charles' Jacobite army in 1745. Again, an impactive film that coming out of that experience and hardly knowing anything about the film industry, I had a goal that I would, at some point in the future, make a major historical series. And I did that in 1992, 20 years later. So history has always been this churn factor in what I do and how I've lived my life. And one of the things that I realised was that history was everywhere. History was all, all about me. We're all products of history. Our families go back millennia. They created history. And around me, history dictated what I needed to know. If you wanted to understand the Westminster political system, it all began with Magna Carta in 1215. If you wanted to know about flight, it began with the Wright brothers. If you wanted to know about communications, it began with the Rosetta Stone and Caxton's printing press and the Italian inventor Marconi with radio. And it also had a part, this debunker of history, Henry Ford, and his work on the horseless carriage. So history had a long and important transition. And I brought this together because History then had a background and an impact on where I had come from, my family's history. I mean, really beginning with the arrival of the First Fleet, 
and their belief that these English colonists had arrived in this empty country, having somehow forgotten that there were residents here, Aboriginal people that had been here for 60,000 years. We know of that great saying that goes, you know, those who forget history, you know, live to regret it. And that's been the case. If President Bush and his advisers had taken a minute to understand the history of Afghanistan, they'd realise you can't win a war in Afghanistan. Genghis Khan had tried. Alexander the Great had tried. The British had three goes at invading Afghanistan. The Russians invaded Afghanistan in 1979 through to 1989. That completely drained Russia of gold reserves and oil stores, brought on perestroika, and the collapse of communism. Had they looked at history, if they went back and studied history, they would know that this is not a possibility. Hegel came up with a wonderful line. He said, the one thing you learn about history is that you don't take any lessons away from that learning experience. So in Australia, we had an interesting history post-Federation in 1901. We went through two major wars. We went through a depression. But we're also impacted by this massive influx of people through immigration. In 1947, the then Minister for Immigration, Arthur Corwell, declared that Australia must populate or perish. But to get people here, he had a serious problem. This was a very Anglo-Celtic culture. Who were migrants? Where were they going to come from? What did they look like? And how would they change Australia, this traditional culture? So he very cleverly brought a shipload of young Baltic displaced people who arrived in Melbourne. The press turned out. They were shown around. They were highlighted. They were pointed out that this is the face of the migrant. They're white, blonde, healthy, young And there's lots more of them over there in Europe, so bring them on. This is where history and understanding our history becomes important. If we can understand the roots of our history, we can understand why by 1955 a million people came to this country. If we understand facts and detail and history, we can work our way through problems, we can understand that issues can be resolved, we can understand cultures, and we can understand and provide answers. So how can people generally engage in history and get something from this discipline? I suggest that they begin with their family. People are fascinated with where they came from, where our relatives came from, what their journey here was. They also want to know about their medical history and their genetic history. And from here, you perhaps go to your local history. You go from your home to your street. The name of your street has a historic origin. The name of the local park is named after someone with an historic presence. From here, you can perhaps go out to a national or an international understanding. What if you visit places of history, battlefields, places where books were written or paintings were painted, places where invention or inspiration, places that are important in history. When you travel and you know what you're looking at, you get far more out of that travel experience and what you're seeing. There's museums you can go to. You can go to places of prehistory, archaeology. You can go to inspirational places that tell you something about the past and enrich you. People have said to me, ah, look, you know, what's the value of doing studying history? You know, you could look at medicine or engineering or environmental science or even economics and say, well, these have a tangible daily benefit. What does history do? How does history relate to this? The big tech companies in America and the UK are now looking for humanities graduates and those doing arts majors because these are people that have been taught to think, to be creative, to assess information, to compile information, organise it and provide solutions. And that's an interesting byproduct. Historians of people that are very good researchers, generally good writers, they become authors and journalists and project managers and they work through the needs of studying people studying individuals, they work through ethnicity and ethics and the very grounded conditions that give them a sense of focus and really, in turn, make them quite good citizens. So 
You know, I'd like to see that those awful quotes, those quips of people like Henry Ford are forgotten, you know, that history is all bunk. History is not bunk. It's relevant. It's important. It's got a place. It's, it's a discipline that deserves more. So I'd ask you, I'd just say, dip your oar into history. Think about it. Read about it. Give it a place in your heart and in your mind and enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you.